Hello and welcome to today's Empower View. My name is Matthias Schmidler and this is our first issue of the Empower View. In this new format, we provide you with an analysis and commentary about the latest developments in additive manufacturing. Today's issue is all about desktop metal and the latest developments in Bimajet. Desktop Metal was founded 2015 when the hype of 3D printing was slowly decreasing and the major metal AM technology, laser particle fusion, was beginning its transition towards industrialization and production. Now a few weeks ago, Desktop Metal announced to go public, which could elevate the total investments into the company to over 1 billion US dollars. The major claim of Desktop Metal was, and still is, to revolutionize metal 3D printing by dramatically increasing throughput, thus reducing cost. Cost is the major obstacle today towards widespread adoption and industrialization of metal additive manufacturing. And it is something that many other technology providers struggle with. A side claim of desktop metal is also to lower the entry barrier by their studio system. However, today we just want to focus on Binojetting. The binary jetting technology that desktop metal introduced was nothing new. However, the approach was much more radical and consequent compared to other market players. Especially the move towards one pass jetting enabled a massive reduction of production time and process time to produce green parts. And the large build box made it possible to print much more volume in a much shorter time. We estimate that once the production machine is fully matured, it will be the fastest machine on the market to 3D print green parts. But let's have a look at where we are today with binary jetting in the market. Based on our Empower report 2020, we have now over 9,000 powder bed fusion systems installed worldwide. Comparing that with binary jetting, we are talking about less than 300 systems that are currently running in the market. Looking at market competitors, X1 and Digital Metal are probably the most experienced ones on the market. While X1 is rapidly developing their 160 Pro system, which will come very close to the productivity of the desktop metal system, Digital Metal focuses much more on precision and quality of their parts. Both have in common, however, to offer an installed base of working printers and an increasing number of alloys for the user to choose from. Both are capabilities desktop metal still has to develop. Besides those old players in binary jetting, there are two more large OEMs that will play a major role in the future, HP and GE. Both are still very secretive about their progress in binary jetting, and this has a reason. Like every other 3D printing technology, binary jetting has its dirty secrets. And they especially lay in everything that comes after printing the green part. Once again, the actual 3D printing process will be much faster than any other technology with this resolution. But once you've completed printing, you have to deal with two major challenges and neither of the current vendors has yet offered any mature solution to both. Number one is the unpacking of parts. Green parts manufactured by Bionjetting tend to be quite, quite fragile. They have to be depowdered and unpacked and this process is as of today still 100% manually. Now imagine you produced hundreds or even thousands of green parts in a highly productive and fully automatic machine and your next step is to spend hours of manual labor work to depowder and unpack those parts. This scenario surely does not yet live up to the expectations of high volume manufacturing. The second challenge is sintering. For decades, metal injection molding companies are producing large production volumes of sintering parts. Those parts and the tool making uh, take several weeks of lead time. This lead time, however, is not so much caused by tooling, but rather by the iterations you need to get parts out of the sintering oven that match your accuracy requirements. This problem is not yet solved by binary and there's still very little knowledge in the market about what actually happens during sintering and how deformation at sintering can be controlled. And one major advantage of additive manufacturing is the short lead time. But currently, this advantage does not yet count for binary jetting. 
The big question is, will desktop metal develop solutions to solve those two challenges? If they do, they will push additive manufacturing to new horizons, enabling many new applications and increasing the adoption of mass industries such as automotive or consumer. They will open a market of 2.5 billion US do dollar, which is currently covered by metal injection molding. But if they don't offer solutions for the major challenges, they will remain a highly funded company serving only niche industries. We expect that the next five years will show if they can make it. And we are sure that the addition of funding created by going public will help the company on this path. Now, thanks for listening. I hope you enjoyed this first session and hope to see you next time.